right, my DIY tilt array. If you haven't seen that, I got a couple of videos. I'll link the playlist up above. But people want to know a price breakdown and kind of a parts breakdown, how efficient it's been. So I'm gonna talk about all that in this video. And I'm also gonna talk about the things I would change on my next one, because I am gonna be doing a next one at some point. Uh, and I'll talk about the changes I would make to this and let you know. All right, so first off, I'll go ahead and give you a couple of updates. Basically, I took the post, took some two by sixes and did some crosses on the back. So it went from the bottom of one to the top of the next and kind of crossed them to keep all three of them from swaying at all, you know, just to give them a little more stability. That is one thing I will update on the next one is I use four by six posts on this one and I've had over 40 mile an hour gusts. This thing hadn't went anywhere yet, but to make it more stable and more secure and you know, I won't have to worry about it at all, I would use six by sixes on my next one. So that'd be the one thing I would change. I haven't had a problem with any of the other stuff. Some people were thinking I'd have to add some more two by six braces and some braces on the corners and stuff like that, but I haven't seen this thing twist or anything at all and I've pushed on it and everything else and it's looked fine. And to hold the tilt, right now I'm just using a two by four and basically I have it screwed in to the post, as you can see. That's one thing I will be updating here in the future. I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do it, Would I have through something in and out or even take bolts in and out. So I have a couple of ideas and we're gonna see what happens, but I'll update you in the future whenever I fix that. That was just a quick update on what you might not have seen. So let's go ahead and talk about all the parts I use and the price for all of that stuff. The bolts that I use, I use grade eight bolts. Some people think I didn't need to use them, but I just went with the strongest thing I could find. And basically with all the bolts and the washers and that whole setup, I got it from uh, McMaster Car. Maybe you can get it locally cheaper. That was $91.02 for grade eight bolts. That's a bolt, seven eighths bolt, and it was what, eight inches long, I think. And then I had four flat washers, so I could have a washer in between every two by six and the post, a lock washer and a nut. So basically for each one of those, for three posts, $91.02 from McMaster car. That was very expensive just for that bolt, but I mean, that is only three connections holding this whole thing up, those bolts are it. So I just wanted the thing to be as strong as possible and didn't want it to go anywhere. Probably overdone. But, you know, you could probably use, what is it, grade five, grade three, whatever the next grade down is, and it'd probably be fine. But I use the strongest thing because I'm not an engineer, and I just wanted the thing to hold up over time. And if you want the exact name of the, the stuff I got, it was zinc yellow chromate plated hex head screws, grade eight steel, seven eighths with a nine thread size, eight inches long. And then the same thing, seven eighths by nine thread for the flat washer, I mean, for the nuts. So of course I'm gonna have three of the lock washers and then I had 12 of the flat washers. Then let's break down the wood. I got all the wood from Home Depot. So I'll just go ahead and break down everything that I got from them. I got the three four by sixes by 10 foot. You know, if you can find 12 foot, get them, but I couldn't at the time. So basically I put the things about four foot in the ground and they're a little over five foot out of the ground and I cut some small sections off of each one to use on the two by sixes when I put them on the post. You can go back and watch the video, but I got three of those. I got four by sixes by 10. I got three of them. That was $60.84. Then I got eight Unistrut to put up 12 panels. This could be different for you. It just depends on how big you want your array to be. You know, but for 12 panels, I have the 305 watt Hyundai panels. They've been doing outstanding. We're gonna talk about the efficiency here in a minute after I break down this cost and the parts list. But I got eight of the Super Struts, 10 foot long. That was $232. Then I got, you gotta have uh, your nuts for the Super Strut. So I got six packs of those. Don't need quite that many, but you know, it's if you get a five pack, that's $26. I got the quarter inch by 20, two and a half inch uh, bolts. That's to hold the panels down. Got a pack of them, that's a hundred in that. I got some quarter inch uh, flat washers. That was $7. Then I got some two by six by 12s. I got four of those. And then I got, and those two by six by 12s, that's what I use for the cross beams. And that was $42. And then I got two by six by 10s. And that was for the main frame. That's the main frame. That's the ones on the post. And that's the one on the, on the top and the bottom of the whole frame. Two by six by tens. I got 11 of those. One of them I cut in half. And that's what I braced the, uh, where it connects in the middle of the, of the bottom and the top. That's $97. Then two by fours. I just have some regular ones, uh, studs or whatever for right now. 
Got three of those, $9.75. So basically that comes to $507.87. So let's go ahead and add that up. What did we say before? Got 9102 and 507.87. So that's $598.89 what I spent on this array. To me, not that bad. You're definitely gonna spend way more than $1,000 plus shipping if you're gonna find a commercial type array. It's probably gonna be around $1,500 for these 12 panels, if you get a, a aluminum one or whatever, three, four, five, six hundred dollars for shipping, who knows how much it's gonna be. So you save a lot of money by doing it yourself, and it's a tilt array. It's not always gonna be a tilt array with a commercial one. They can be, but not always. So let's go ahead and talk about the efficiency that I saw. So I bring up the EG4 monitoring software so you can see all this. But basically on the tilt array, you know, these are 305 watt panels. So that's 3,660 watts. So as you can see, Basically from 10 o'clock in the morning to about two o'clock in the afternoon, four hours, I'm always at at least 82% efficiency, you know, because I'm pulling over 3000 watts the entire time. And at the best part of the day, I'll go ahead and show you, I've had 93% efficiency because I pulled in a little over 3,400 watts. As you can see, 3402, and then, you know, divided by 3660, that's basically 93% efficiency. That's very efficient for these panels that are only $88 a panel right now. I mean, ridiculously cheap. And Signature Solar has $150 shipping right now. So if you're interested in that, hey, you need to go check them out because the shipping a lot of times is the most expensive thing that makes the price of everything go up. It's gonna be three or $400. So $150 shipping. If you get a whole pallet of these panels, you know, that's the best deal that's gonna bring your price per panel down. Or you can go get 10, you know, a minimum of 10 Hey, and you're gonna be just a little over a thousand dollars for you know some panels to get you started. So for less than two thousand dollars with this tilt array, hey, you'll be good to go and you'll be very efficient. And basically, my efficiency has been over ninety percent, basically all the time from eleven to one o'clock. It's over ninety percent efficient. You know, very very good. My efficiency is always above what my solar ever panels are, and those are better panels. They got 10 bus bars on those panels. My Hyundai, they have nine. So, you know, more efficient with 10, but I'm getting more out of it with a tilt array. So basically spent $600, become more efficient. I spent more in the cost of my stationary array for the 455 watt panels than I spent on a tilt array. So, you know, go figure that. And that thing is not as efficient as this one. I mean, it's pretty efficient. It's not bad most of the time. But right now, it's not going to be that great because my angle is 44 on the tilt array. And it's like, I can't remember the exact name, but it's like 30 something because it's kind of like the average for my area. So I just put it at the average so it'll be good pretty much all year round. So my tilt array is doing better. So bottom line is, uh, the thing I would change is I'd get longer bolts and had to have six by six posts. So then I won't have to worry about somebody else building this and having a problem with a four by six or something if you get super high winds. Six by six, to me, it's gonna be just as good as a commercial unit, you know? I just don't think it's gonna break. I think it's gonna be good to go. My four by six, I don't think it's gonna break either unless there's some kind of crazy tornado or crazy hurricane winds or something that's just out of the ordinary. And would I recommend building this uh, type of uh, tilt array? Absolutely, especially if you don't have a lot of panels. If you have like a ton of panels, it's probably not gonna matter. You can put them all stationary. It might, you know, you, you got enough to overcome that. But if you don't have a ton or you want the best efficiency that you can get out of your panels, build a tilt array. And it was fairly simple. My next one, it'll go a lot faster. The one thing I did forget to add in, so it'll probably take the cost up another $20, is some screws. So I did use three inch screws. I didn't add that to the list. So let's say it's $630. So it's gonna be a little over $600. And if you're thinking of anything else I missed, which I may have, I'll try to get it added. But hey, what do you think of the tilt array? What do you think about the efficiency? I mean, I think it's doing outstanding at this point. Had it running good for a week with my inverters once I got those all lined out. And I have a lot more stuff coming out on these inverters if you're interested in that. As you can see, I took the wires, I took the AC wires and got them in conduit already, but I'll be doing an update video on all that. The PV stuff is not in conduit yet. Still gotta dig the trenches and all that stuff. But if you are interested in any of that, hey, think about hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button, and thanks for watching.